Welcome back, everyone. My name is Michael LeBlanc, Director and Senior Portfolio Manager at Canaccord Junoni Wealth Management. And thanks for joining us here every week where we do a live update of everything we saw last week in the markets and what we see coming up. This is next week today. And as always, uh, keep in mind, everything we cover here is for uh, information purposes only. Uh, do do your own due diligence or talk to a professional advisor before applying any strategies in your portfolio. Uh, if you have any questions on anything we talk about today, feel free, reach out to us. Just go to mikeonmoney.com. That's uh, our portal. You can reach me, uh, my phone, email, everything's all there. Feel free to reach out with any questions you might have, uh, either after today's uh, live broadcast or if you're watching this on the recording of the podcast later, feel free to go there and uh, and let us know what you think. So with that, let's jump into things. I am working remotely today. Um, if you're uh, one of our BC watchers, uh, no, I did not run away from the floods and storms. They're not trapped anywhere. I was uh, pre-planned travel. So hopefully the, uh, you know, everything's coming through clearly uh, as I'm working from, uh, from a different location and uh, always a suspect with Wi-Fi. I'm not going to spend too much on a COVID update. I'm really just going to touch on uh, nothing really new in, in BC, Canada. Uh, but more just looking at, you know, around the world, obviously we're seeing some uh, bigger numbers, resurgence again in areas like Germany and Austria just put in some pretty severe lockdowns. Uh, basically, they've done the, the, the kind of the reverse of, uh, of last year, um, where if you're unvaccinated, uh, you're not able to go out. You have to stay confined at, at home. You can only go out for essential uh, essential needs like food and uh, medical attention. Uh, so, you know, with pretty hefty fines, uh, if you want to, to go, uh, go out and about and, and uh, interact with uh, people and be social, you have to carry a proof of vaccine all the time. So uh, we're seeing more and more things like that happening. Uh, you know, obviously we're in uh, New Zealand, uh, we're seeing some resurgence. Really where we're seeing is, is countries that kind of you know, have that low overall vaccination rates. We're seeing big numbers uh, pop up again, uh, you know, and, and the latest numbers, we're seeing bigger numbers in the U.S. as well. Uh, and the latest I've heard, uh, and I haven't got the exact number in front of me here, but I uh, last I heard was the U.S. was still below about a, a 60% overall vaccination rate, which is, is still pretty low on a global scale. So we're still keeping a close eye on, on how things are being affected uh, as far as restrictions and travel restrictions go. So with that, uh, take a look at the news. What we're looking for this week is Canadian housing starts. Uh, I will say I saw some preliminary numbers. Uh, looks like we set uh, another big rally from the July numbers to uh, October. Uh, so, you know, another big surge uh, in the high double digits. Uh, percentile so so that's positive for the canadian uh, housing market still seeing a lot of activity there uh, still seeing pretty low inventories as well we're looking at util u.s retail sales numbers for october as well as the industrial production numbers for october and earnings seasons continue as we look out for uh, walmart and home depot numbers this week uh, stocks have uh, did pretty well today or have done pretty well so far today a uh, little bit more muted than than has been since the summertime. Uh, as you know, we've been talking for the last few weeks. There's still a lot of discussion around you know this higher inflation. What's what what are rates going to look like? What's the U.S. Fed going to do as far as their their scaling back of the quantitative easing over the uh, over the coming months and into the new year? So, uh, so the markets are taking a little bit of pause, but we'll take a look at the uh, the ten-year the bond and the five-year numbers as well uh, later on today, just to kind of see what the market's telling us as far as expectations go. Uh, another news: Elon Musk, of course, if you've been following the Tesla news, uh, he's always in the news. It seems uh, has been selling about six billion dollars of his stock. Uh, you know, charities are buzzing. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk around. Uh, there was a, a tweet out, um, out on Twitter a couple of weeks ago just saying, you know, if only uh, he donated $4 billion, I think was the number, he could solve, <coughs> excuse me, world hunger. Uh, and of course, he, he pushed back on that saying, well, you know, show me how that would actually work. And obviously he couldn't solve it, make a big dent in it, but he couldn't solve it with that amount of money. Uh, 
Uh, but he also has a, a lot of options uh, due this year or is being awarded this year. So he's selling some stock because he's going to have a big tax bill uh, on that. Uh, and he's looking to cover that, uh, cover that with cash. But it'd be nice to just be able to go out and raise $6 billion when you need it. So, uh, so that's obviously affected the stock price. Uh, freighters are moving to the forefront uh, along with the, uh, the plane makers, uh, and it's basically bedding on the trade flow. You know, as we look at this pandemic driven boom in air cargo, you know, everyone shopping at home, uh, more, more packages being shipped. We've got the supply chain bottleneck. Uh, it's really pushing the airline manufacturers, Airbus and Boeing, to uh, start, you know, selling and building some bigger planes. Uh, to be able to carry the, the, the bigger loads. Um, and this is only going to be profitable for them if this remains a long-term trend. Uh, you know, they are still pretty uh, exposed should, uh, should this trend kind of revert to the norm, uh, which is a, the big concern with the supply chain uh, uh, bottleneck is, you know, everyone scrambles to, uh, to build up, um, you know, more more capacity, um, more manufacturing, and then all of a sudden demand uh, eases off, and then you have a glut. And uh, the same thing could happen here with the uh, with the uh, with the airlines, because it's not like they can uh, turn out turn out a new plane in a couple of weeks. So the orders uh, the orders will have to be up backlogged. Uh, and the Fed is out there really, uh, you know, struggling with this post recovery um, market of the post-recovery world, uh, there's a lot of new challenges out there because uh, obviously a lot of things changed during the pandemic. And, uh, you know, at the peak of the closures and, and of course, now the, the, the supply chain issues, the, uh, you know, we can go into the fuel costs, uh, you know, the unemployment shooting up, uh, and, and now the inability to even hire people, even though we still have a high unemployment, uh, you know, how do we unwind all the new unemployment benefits? Basically, the, the governments, the elected officials out there are trying to figure out what, you know, this, this phrase we've been talking about now for over, uh, over 20 months, the new normal. What's it going to be? Because some of the changes that happened will remain permanent. Uh, people have changed habits. People have changed behaviors. Uh, people have embraced, you know, new technologies they might have not have or certainly not as quickly as they did through the pandemic. Um, and how is that going to change things moving forward and where, you know, where's everything going to stop? So when the music stops and the supply chain gets caught up and hopefully, you know, we, uh, we at least have higher vaccination rates and, and, you know, less travel restrictions, or will some of these travel restrictions remain in place forever? This is what they're trying to figure out. And, and when that music stops, what's it going to look like and how do you plan for that? And, and elected officials and markets, as we'll talk about uh, with some of the companies here today, uh, you need to keep that in mind in your portfolios. You know, the, the, the normal or, or, or what's going to happen moving forward obviously is going to be modified from what we knew in the past because uh, things have changed and some things permanently. Uh, Biden uh, obviously needed the, the recent boost. He has signed his uh, $1 trillion infrastructure deal uh, into place. Uh, obviously, that was hanging over their heads quite a bit. Uh, his, uh, his popularity in the polls was sliding. Uh, so getting this through, obviously, at least it's something he can put a stamp on and say that they did as they move, uh, kind of moving quickly into the midterm elections. Uh, and and uh, obviously, the Democrats wanted to maintain control of the Senate and Congress. BNP has uh, hired advisors to explore the sale of a $15 billion bank of, uh, of the West sale. So BNP being a big financial firm in, the, uh, in, the, in Europe, uh, their U.S. arm uh, of their business is Bank of the West. Uh, and they're just finding it hard to compete in that market. Uh, it is very different, you know, competing in the United States, uh, especially from Europe, very different rules. Uh, Competition is very different uh, than, the, than the structure you see over in the UK or Europe. Uh, and uh, so they're looking at uh, selling that off in the coming year. KKR, you know, we've talked quite a bit about uh, acquisitions and mergers. Uh, KKR, who's already done a couple uh, through this pandemic, 
uh, is looking to acquire a Cyrus One, uh, taking it privately for uh, $11.5 billion. And they're a uh, US-based uh, data, data center operator. And obviously data has been at the forefront, not just through the pandemic. I think it's, it's accelerated it uh, through the pandemic as companies uh, are really working hard to better understand their clientele, understand their, 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 their market, their market share, uh, and how to tap into that using the data set either they have or purchasing data sets from other uh, tech companies like uh, Google and, and Facebook and the likes. So more and more we're seeing that. And as well, American Towers looking, uh, so American Towers and other big uh, tech company, well, tech slash real estate company in the United States that owns the cell towers uh, for all the cell phone uh, activity down there. Uh, and they're looking at buying a data center as well called CoreSight for about seven and a half billion dollars. So a lot of activity happening in that. Uh, we, we've done special videos on I innovative technology and, you know, data management or, or, you know, data centers are at the forefront of that because, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what business you're in these days, um, you, you maximizing your data set, maximizing the power of that data set to, uh, to grow your business is vital. Uh, and the specialty companies out there um, are at, uh, you know, the cutting edge of that. So we're probably going to see more mergers and acquisitions and, and certainly a lot more growth in that area. Shell is looking to ditch the Dutch from its name. So uh, it's considering the Royal Dutch Shell is, uh, Shell rather, is looking at moving its headquarters to London. Uh, basically, it's a tax move. The Netherlands have added um, increased taxation. And uh, so they're looking basically to move to a lower tax uh, jurisdiction, uh, which London's currently offering. So let's take a look at what, uh, what's coming up this week. Uh, as I mentioned, Walmart is looking at uh, releasing their earnings. We should see a slightly, uh, slightly higher number uh, for the third quarter sales. Uh, you know, basically this early early Christmas shopping, we've been talking about it uh, for a few weeks that, you know, the supply chain problems are, uh, are potentially going to uh, have low inventories uh, for, your, uh, for your holiday shopping. Uh, and, but, but the other thing we're also starting to see now is because because of the supply chain problems uh, and people doing their early shopping, you know, we're almost going back to that, um, that surge buying uh, that we saw in, at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, when toilet paper ran out everywhere because everyone was hoarding it and just buying extra. We're almost seeing people uh, doing the same thing now, worried that there's gonna be nothing available in, uh, in, in December and buying up everything early, which of course is, self-fulfilling, you know, causing the, the shortages before new shipments can come in. So we, we are expecting this pretty good numbers just because of that early buying, but what's going to be the repercussions for the next quarter numbers uh, if, uh, you know, if inventories are low and they're not able to restock. Uh, home Depot should also report a really uh, a pretty good quarter as we've not really seen a slowdown down in building material or tools, you know, professional contractors and the do it at home people. Um, have not really slowed down. You know, people are continuing to nest. You know, travels has opened to some extent, but uh, you know, not people haven't really started heavily doing that. There's still a lot of people focusing on their homes uh, and uh, just making it easier and nicer uh, for them to stay uh, stay put. Uh, so we should see some pretty good numbers out of them as well. Uh, you know, the Commerce Department is expecting those retail numbers to be pretty strong in October. Again, going back to the Walmart, Walmart numbers, just on that pre-holiday uh, pre holiday buying, we should see some pretty, uh, pretty strong numbers. We did see uh, some good numbers out of the manufacturing last week, uh, which generally uh, translates into retail sales. Um, but again, you know, when you're looking at your portfolio, you're trying to decide where to put it. Keep in mind, all these retailers are absorbing higher costs for, you know, the shipping, which has been uh, pretty much throughout the pandemic. You know, they're having to pay more for employees. Uh, you know, the retail, you know, the retail and hospitality areas are probably two of the strong, their hardest hit with these lack of employees. So they're having to pay more. So be really cautious of, uh, of your positions in, in those, those, those sectors. Uh, keeping in mind that, yes, 
sales numbers might be going up, but what are those profit numbers uh, looking up like? Are they going to be affected by the supply chain? Are they going to be affected by higher um, higher cost uh, operating costs along the way? Um, because they're paying pretty big dollars. Well, like even if they can get inventory, uh, shipping costs have, have dramatically increased as well. Other top news, I mentioned Tesla, you know, that stock uh, stock price, its overall market valuation fell below that $1 trillion mark uh, after Elon Musk tweeted that he was going to be selling those stocks to pay taxes. Uh, we certainly saw a sell off of the shares, you know, well below the $1,000 mark. Uh, so still hugely up on a year uh, as far as performance of the uh, of the overall uh, share price, uh, but taking a bit, a bit of a hit off the top. But that will happen if you're selling uh, selling off uh, almost seven billion dollars of stocks and options, um, and most of Elon's Musk has been tied up in stock. So, you know his his wealth is tied to the performance of the stock. Uh, you know if the stock's going down, his wealth goes down. He, he's not very liquid. He doesn't take big salaries, uh, and he doesn't have much as as far as ways liquid assets outside of uh, of his Tesla stocks. Now that's he he he's getting by. Don't worry, but uh, but he's this is a pretty big chunk he's selling off. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town, uh, but at what cost? You know, just you know the, uh, the talking more about that uh, Walmart and also Target. Be careful of your retailers going into the holiday season. Um, you know these guys work on pretty low margin. Costs are surging, especially around the labor side and the land and freight. Uh, sorry, the ocean and freight costs uh, are, are going up pretty high. So, um, you know, if you own any of those positions, uh, we don't own any. Uh, we're not certainly not adding right, right now. We do expect that things are going to get a lot tighter here before they get better, um, especially around that labor cost side of things, because th that solution, uh, I think, is going to be longer, uh, longer uh, around longer than uh, maybe the markets even uh, expect, uh, because you know it is a weird disjoint that we have high unemployment, but at the same time, uh, you know, very hard to to get people to work at those low wages. So there is uh, there is something's going to break in in, in that uh, in that area, um, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, and certainly not for the holiday season. Uh, you know. The, the opioid trials uh, continue and there's a landmark trial going on right now. It's about to wrap up. And this is the one not against the manufacturer. So we've seen the, you know, the big Purdue uh, and we've seen, you know, the, the, the big uh, producers like J&J &J and, and Pfizer's and, and, and those kinds of companies go through their lawsuits and settlements. But this is the first one where uh, the lawsuit is directed at three pharmacy chains um, that are basically you know, these ones are, these particular ones are in, in Ohio, uh, basically that, you know, they, they helped with the, uh, the, the prolification of the pandemic or, or sorry, the, the um, epidemic of opioid overdoses uh, in their communities. Uh, and basically they are held to a standard, you know, pharmacies are, pharmacies are held to a standard to track any controlled, you know, certain uh, categories of uh, medications. And, you know, the number of the volumes that were being sold for the size of the communities that they were operating in were astronomically high. And that's the basis of the case uh, is looking to to wrap up here. Uh, and if and if they win or if the lawsuit wins, um, obviously, this is going to open it up for even more of these types of, of lawsuits uh, around the pharmacies, the pharmacies themselves, as opposed to just the manufacturers. So, uh, so again, something to keep an eye on. If uh, you know you hold any of the the, the pharmacy chains, uh, you know they are susceptible, or they may be susceptible, pending the outcome of this case. Uh, Burger King making a different move here. Uh, so, Burger King's parent is uh, uh, going to buy Firehouse Subs for a billion dollars, uh, and it comes at a time when their you know their brands are, are pretty much struggling. Uh, you know, kind of bounce back um, after some of the closures. They've had a lot of increased competition uh, and a lot of rivals are, are winning with new menu launches, new items on their menu. Uh, seems like the Burger King uh, franchises uh, and, and uh, or the parent company that owns the, the different franchises uh, are struggling a little bit now. So it's a bold move. So we'll have to see if this is a way of restructuring and, and, and maybe building up some new verticals to, to compete a little bit better. Uh, but 
you know, during a period of time that they're, they're struggling, uh, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting acquisition. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've talked many times about the antitrust lawsuits against the big tech, you know, the, the, one of the bigger ones in the U.S. going on right now is against Alphabet, which is Google's parent company. Uh, in the, you know, in U.K., we've got the Facebook one going on, uh, but the U.S. states, who uh, many of them uh, have filed against Google, uh, have just modified their, their or updated their antitrust complaint. Uh, this is being led by Texas, but there's a there's a large uh, group of states that are all uh, involved in this suit uh, and basically saying that they're using course of task tactics to uh, to get around these antitrust laws and the new antitrust laws that are coming down the pipeline so nothing really new on this other than you know alphabet or google is trying to get around the restrictions and the you know the states are trying to hold them accountable uh, these ones are going to go on for a while as I mentioned, I think it was last week we talked about the Facebook in the UK one and really looking at the UK to set a, a global standard for for part of that, that, you know, companies will have to follow, uh, uh, follow suit and other countries may follow suit as well. On the on the exchange front, we've seen the dollar rally a little bit. Um, uh, just on the uh, just on the better markets, on the kind of the outlook of the quantitative easing uh, to be falling in line with expectations, so that the dollar kind of breathed a sigh of relief after it had uh, a couple of weeks of decline. Uh, it's in the last week; it's it's rallied up a little bit, uh, and we're also seeing a little bit in the oil markets. A uh, little of the concern of the higher oil prices uh, dropping a little bit. Uh, basically, what we've seen is a little bit more supply in the market, but also we've seen some uh, some countries uh, looking to tap into the reserves to to ease the pricing within the country. And the U.S. is looking at tapping into their government reserves in order to uh, to ease the the pressure on the uh, on the gas prices uh, in the United States. <laughs> Wish we could see that in Canada. I uh, we probably won't, but. Uh, but that's easing a little bit of the pressure on oil, probably temporary. Again, with this global shipping um, bottleneck, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know the, the the demand I think is is going to stay quite high or uh, even increase in the short term as uh, as we try to keep up with these things. And we can't go a week without talking about cryptocurrencies. Uh, and we did see uh, we did see a bit of a retreat. Um, Bitcoin fallen uh, actually more than. 5%, I've got 5.4 here, but it actually dipped below the $60,000 mark um, from its recent rally uh, from, it, from its highs. And Ethereum also dropping just over 6% uh, as it pulled it has pulled back from its highs as well. So a little bit of easing against those riskier assets um, as, uh, as that cools off a little bit. The volume, the buying volume certainly has eased off of it. The, uh, the 10 year notes slipped a little bit. They did rally up over the last couple of weeks and then pulled back from their highs. Uh, and again, this is mostly just on that uh, expectation that uh, we are going to go into uh, a lighter quantitative easing, but it's not going to be uh, anytime soon as far as the interest rates go. Still likely late 2022, early 2023. Uh, so the markets is kind of relaxing a little bit as, uh, as there was no big surprises there or certainly none communicated so far. The five-year treasury, uh, which uh, was, you know, had already kind of moved and, and largely reflected those expectations, actually showing a little bit of gap in a pretty good value compared to the 10-year uh, in the current situation. Uh, and that inflation number is expected to remain pretty elevated, uh, certainly for the next few months going into 2022. Um, uh, again, until until we have supply chain issues uh, eased up, uh, and, and again, we might be facing that self fulfilled prophecy uh, if we have everyone surge buying and, and, and jumping on to um, kind of panic buying, if you want to call it that, uh, driving up prices in the in the shorter term. Uh, as I mentioned, oil eased off a little bit. Um, it's down, it's still around an eighty dollar a barrel range. U.S. I think this morning I was looking at it. Uh, and, and that should stay in, in that range. As I said, demand is staying high. We are seeing a little bit of supply pressure um, easing uh, as, as those reserves are being tapped and, uh, and some, more, uh, some more production is being released. Uh, copper edged a little bit lower, mostly on the dollar move as the dollar edged higher. 
um, but copper is still going to continue uh, to kind of accelerate here uh, as the demand is showing really no signs of falling, falling or slowing as um, as demand goes up. There is a little bit of um, downward pressure due to construction slowdown in China. Uh, and this is just, you know, if you follow the story from a few weeks ago, uh, Evergrande, which is a big uh, real estate company in China, um, big construction company, uh, got into financial difficulty, basically insolvent, has been, you know, partially backed by the Chinese government at this point uh, to keep them solvent and keep them moving, moving along uh, to prevent a real estate crisis over there. Uh, but copper is a big, uh, big component into the metals, uh, the girders and that into those high rise constructions. So certainly a little bit of demand weakness from that front, but we're still seeing strong demand uh, globally uh, around the copper prices. So with that, I know it was a shorter week this week, as I said, I'm on the road, uh, but do go to mikeonmoney.com with any of your questions. Uh, happy to answer any of those, any, uh, any topics you want to make sure we cover, uh, any questions about your own portfolio, about what we're doing in the portfolios. Uh, we've seen, a, a, you know, October was a great month in the portfolios. November is, is knocking it out of the park for the portfolios, um, which we're really happy to see, uh, you know, given we don't chase risk that much. Uh, but if you have any questions about your own or um, any outside investments you're doing, visit us. We're happy to, to you know, give us our, give you our two cents in any way we can. But with that, I'll let you go enjoy your day. And uh, hopefully, if you're in BC, you, uh, you stay safe through these storms. Uh, from what I understand, it has eased off, uh, but it looked pretty bad. And um, I'm looking forward to some updates on uh, what everything looks like now that the, the storms have eased off. So with that, take care, everyone. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye now.